Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to the second video in a tutorial series that I'm calling Web Design Fundamentals. Um, in the last video, we kind of went over an outline of the course, what we're going to be learning for the next few weeks. Um, so if you missed that video, go back. It'll be the video directly before this one in the playlist. And uh, it's pretty short. It'll just go over um, just what we're going to be talking about uh, in, this, in this tutorial series. But right now in this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about what HTML is and then we're going to talk about how to write it and by the end of the video we're going to be able to create a very basic web page that displays some text to the web browser. Now I'm going to try and keep this video under 20 minutes but if it goes a little over just bear with me. Uh, there's going to be a lot of information in this video. The videos after should be relatively shorter um, but we got to get through some some basic HTML concepts before we can move on to anything uh, anything more specific. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is what HTML is. Uh, it stands for a hypertext markup language, but that's just a bunch of computer talk, computer vocabulary that doesn't really make any sense. Uh, basically what all that means is that HTML is, uh, is like the building blocks of a web page. So for example, I like to use this analogy. Um, if you wanted to think of a web page as a house, the HTML would be like the wood, the drywall, the nails, the full structure of the house everything that kind of builds the house. So that's what HTML is, it's the structure of a web page, it's what sets it up. Later on in this tutorial series we're going to be learning about CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and uh, if we were to stick with this house analogy then the CSS would be like the paint and the decorations, everything that makes the house look nicer. And then at the very end of this series we're going to be jumping into JavaScript, which is a programming language, and it basically allows you to create dynamic events in your web pages. Um, so if we were using that house analogy again, the JavaScript would be like the electrical wiring, the lights, switches, um, all the kind of functions of the house. But in the, in the first, I'd say, maybe 10 videos, uh, we're just going to be talking strictly about HTML, just to get you guys really familiar with the language. Um, and you might be asking, well, if I want to create a website, why don't I just use one of those online drag-and-drop website builders? And uh, the answer for that is you can. There's honestly nothing particularly wrong with it. It's useful if you're creating maybe a one-page portfolio website or maybe you're just setting something up for a school project. And if that's what you're doing and you have no other interest in ever creating a web page again, then I'd say, yeah, by all means, you can go ahead and use one of those. Now the reason why it's preferred to actually learn how to code is because, well first of all, professional web designers uh, and developers have to code, they have to know how to. And also those drag and drop builders aren't very customizable. When you code a website from scratch, you, are, you literally have any option to do anything you want. It's only limited by your creativity and the programming languages that you know. Uh, so that's why we want to start with learning HTML. Um, it also is a great introduction into the world of programming. HTML itself isn't a programming language, but it gives you a nice intro into, or isn't, a, yeah, it's not a programming language, it's more of a computer language, it's like a markup language. Uh, so it gives you a, uh, a better intro into the world of just computer languages and working with computers. Um, so that in itself is very useful. That's how I got started and I ended up getting into programming. I know quite a few languages and uh, use them on various projects. So anyway, HTML is a great intro into all of that. Uh, so that's basically what HTML is. That's what we're going to be learning. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what, uh, exactly what HTML looks like and how to write it. So the first thing that I want to mention here is I'm going to go ahead and open up my text editor. I'm using Ubuntu, it's a distribution of Linux, but every operating system should have a text editor in it. Uh, for Mac, it's text edit. For Windows, I believe it's notepad. Um, whatever one you use, just make sure there's a plain text option down here. Uh, that's important for writing HTML. But that's the nice thing about it is you can pretty much use any text editor uh, for, your, uh, for your code as long as it offers a plain text option. Um, so go ahead and do that. I don't recommend using Microsoft Word. I'm not even sure if they have a plain text option. But anyway, once you have your text editor open and you're in plain text mode, you can go ahead and learn how to write HTML. Change a couple things here. Okay. So in HTML, every HTML basically creates an object to display to the web page. Um, 
because when your computer, your web browser is reading the code, it needs to know what to display to the screen. And the, the, the object that you use in HTML to describe this is called an element. And uh, in HTML, an element is started out with this opening triangular bracket. And then the name of the element, which is called a tag. And the name of the element is describes what element you're creating. So here we're going to create a paragraph element. And the paragraph element basically uh, allows you to display a paragraph of text or a couple words of text to the screen to display as just normal text as if you were reading something in a web page. And the way we describe the paragraph tag is with the P, the character P, lowercase. And then we end the element with this closing triangular bracket. Um, these triangular brackets are also known as the greater than and less than signs. Uh, they're directly above your comma and period on your keypad. So that starts out our paragraph element. And now we've created, the, we've created this entire element now. So that's an element. And then inside of this, we can write whatever we want. So let's just say this is a paragraph. We could put anything else in here. We could say uh, the end. It's basically just a way for you to write text to the screen. And then, um, so you may think that this is it. This is all you need. Um, we can now display a paragraph to the web page. And that's not entirely true. And the reason for this is because, just like in the English language, if you're writing an essay, um, we, we end sentences with periods. If you have an essay with a thousand sentences and no periods, it's going to be really confusing. The person reading it isn't going to really understand the essay. Same thing with the computer. Right now it knows that it's creating this paragraph element, but it doesn't know when it ends. And if you add other elements in here, it's going to think that they're inside of the paragraph element, and it's going to get really confused. So the way that we create um, a closing tag or a closing element in HTML is we start off the same way with this opening triangular bracket and then we just add this slash sign in there. And the slash sign tells the computer that okay this is the end of an element so now it knows that it's ending an element but it doesn't know what element it's ending yet and the way we do that is just by describing the tag with that P because we're closing this paragraph element right here and then we do our closing triangular bracket and boom there's our paragraph right there so this is the code to display a paragraph what actually shows up in the web page is this text inside of the paragraph. That's what's going to show up in our web page. Now we can't display this in the browser yet, and the reason for that, well, technically we could, but it's not proper in the way of writing HTML. There's a few other elements that we have to include to be able to show this, and so we're going to go over those right now. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this text here. All right, so the first thing that we have to include in our web page is something called the doc type. And the doc type is kind of unlike any other element in HTML because there's no closing tag or closing element and it's just a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and show it to you guys. You start out with that opening triangular bracket, exclamation mark, and in all caps you type doc type and then lowercase HTML and then your closing triangular bracket. And the, what this does is it basically tells your web browser, Safari, you know, Google Chrome, Firefox, whatever, it tells your web browser that this is an HTML document. And the reason why it needs to distinguish this is because there's other files that we include in web pages, such as CSS, JavaScript. Um, so the web browser needs to know what type of file it's looking at, and it also needs to know what type of HTML, because there's older versions of HTML. This describes the newest version of HTML. So anyway, this is an important element to include. The rest of them that we're going to talk about are all normal HTML elements with opening and closing tags. And then something else I should mention real quick is I use element and tag interchangeably. They basically mean the same thing. Technically, the element is the entire element and the tag is just the type of element. But, in, but programmers and coders usually use them interchangeably. So if I ever say element and I say tag later, just know I'm talking about the same thing. So the first element or tag that we have to include after doc type is the HTML element. And we do that by writing, by opening our tags and putting in HTML, all lowercase. And then something that I like to do right away is I like to close my tags right away with the slash. And the reason for this is because when you're writing more complicated HTML, you might forget when you're writing other elements inside of other elements, you might forget which ones you've closed and it'll cause errors later in your page. So it's always good practice before anything else, as soon as you create an element, close it right away. Alright, 
excuse me. So now that we've created these HTML elements, which basically tells the browser, now we're writing HTML code. Because later on, you'll probably learn that there's other code we can include in an HTML file. Don't even worry about that right now because we're not looking at it. But this tells the browser, okay, now we're working with HTML code, and all of our HTML goes inside of these tags. So the first element that goes inside of our HTML elements is the head element. I'm going to go ahead and close that right away. Give you some time to type that out. And the head element basically is a section to describe data about the web page. There's nothing displayed in the head elements except for the title tag, which we're going to be looking at. But there's other elements that go in here, such as links to CSS documents or your JavaScript documents. It also describes data such as the description that shows up in Google or the title that shows up in Google. And a couple other things that we're not worried about right now, more advanced topics in HTML. The only element that you need to be worried about is the title element. So I'm going to go ahead and indent. And in HTML, it's white space insensitive. And that basically means that you can do it. You don't have to have them in any uh, particular like amount of spaces. You could have you know five returns here in eight spaces. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just something nice to kind of indent elements that are in other elements, just to kind of give it some more structure. And you'll see later on when we work with more complicated code that structuring your HTML is very important to make it readable and easy to change. So typically, whenever we have an element inside of another element, we indent them just to make things more clear. So here we have our title element. I'm going to go ahead and close that right away. And inside of our title element or our title tag, we put the title for our website. So let's go ahead and call this uh, my first web page. And that's going to get displayed up here in your in your menu bar. Um, in Ubuntu, it kind of switches. But that title that's up here that says untitled document in a web browser, it's going to say my first web page. So that's all we do with the head elements. Now we're going to go ahead and create our next, our last and necessary element for HTML, and that's the body element or the body tag. Close that right away. And now we've finally got to the point where we can include our actual code that gets displayed. So every every piece of HTML code that we want to display to the web page goes inside of these body tags. So let's go ahead and create our paragraph again. And let's just go, uh, this is a paragraph. Did I spell that right? Yep. And we're going to put the end. Okay. So now we've created a basic web page. This is all you need to display. This is a paragraph the end to your web browser. So it's fairly simple. Uh, nothing too complicated. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go over. I'm going to reiterate um, all of these elements at the end of this video. But let's go ahead and see what this looks like in our web browser. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to go ahead and call it. What do I call it? Web page. And the extension that we put on this is .html. So just like your images have .jpg or .png, Word documents are .doc. Well, HTML documents are .html. Pretty simple to remember. I'm just going to go ahead and save it into my desktop. Cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this with Google Chrome. And here we go right here. So the cool thing about HTML is that it can be rendered in any web browser. You don't need to upload it to a server. You don't need to do anything with that. It's just, You can read it in your local file system. So here I have my local file system here. So when you click on that, it should default open in your default browser. You can also hit open with and there's a few uh, options for you. So this is our web page. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this if I can so you can see it a little better. Let's go. So this is zoomed in. Actual size is going to be more like right there, and then I'm going to zoom in so it's a little more clear. So all of that code created this right here. This is a paragraph, the end. So that's our very basic web page right here. I'm going to go ahead and go over all of these topics. You may have noticed that all of a sudden the colors changed on this. Uh, that's because I saved it as a .html document, and some text editors offer syntax highlighting, which basically colors certain aspects of your code that make it more clear. So that way here, we can we know that all our text is black and all our elements are blue. Later on in this series, I'm going to be using a more advanced text editor that has some even better options. 
but right now for our first couple tutorials this plain text will do just fine so let's just go over everything that we created real quick we have our doc type which declares it as an HTML document and the most important thing to remember here is that there is no closing element so you don't do any uh, slash doc type you don't do any of that it's just doc type HTML it's basically just a, a heading in your file that describes the file type and the first element that we have is our HTML element and all of our HTML code goes inside of the HTML element and then we have our head element or our head tags and these describe data about the web page including the title and then we have our body and inside of the body we put anything that we want to display so say we wanted to add another paragraph in here let's go ahead and do that real quick Oops. Uh, let's say uh, this is a cool video so now I'm going to go ahead and save that you could also go up here to file save I just used the keyboard shortcut and all we have to do here is refresh the page and now we have this is a paragraph at the end and this is a cool video so notice just that only the text inside of these got displayed and that's what I'm trying to emphasize here is that these elements are what describe what you want to show and later on we'll get into other elements like um, link elements and header elements and um, navigation elements and all of these elements help describe what you're trying to display but right now we're just looking at text versions and uh, I'm going to see how long this video is yeah it's already about 17 minutes I'm going to go ahead and cut it right here um, so that's about the end of this video before you move on to the next video I'd like you guys to go ahead and whether or not you were following along or just watching I'd like you to open up your text editor delete anything you have in there if you've already copied this code and go ahead and keep trying this over and over again until you don't have to look at your at this video anymore to recreate this and once you've done that to where you have it all right and you don't have to look back at this and you understand what all these elements are uh, go ahead and experiment with changing things around like maybe leave off a closing element and see what happens maybe put something weird in here like you know weird text or something and just experiment with what happens in your web browser HTML is a pretty friendly language so it shouldn't create any major errors and depending on what you change around you might not even see a difference in anything but uh, later on when we're writing more complicated code you'll definitely see some errors in your HTML which are known as bugs so just experiment with changing some things around leave some stuff out see what happens uh, it's not going to cause any problems for your computer it's just running your web browser uh, so you don't have to worry about any of that so just experiment around see what happens and once you feel really comfortable with this you're ready to move on to our next video where we're going to be talking about the heading elements and possibly some anchor tags which are links so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button if you want to see more hit subscribe I'm probably going to post the next video right after this. Uh, so anyway, until then, keep practicing, and uh, I'll see you next time.